Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and thanks for joining me again for another video. So today is going to be all about budgeting. I'm going to go ahead and do my November budget using our new budget planner. I thought I would kind of show you how to use it. And then of course I'll have my budget done for November. Today is the 31st. So I need to go ahead and get it done because November is tomorrow. Okay. So I got the budget planner here. I've already done a walkthrough, a full showcase of the entire collection. So you could check that video out if you want to see how this looks on the inside, but you You'll get a little sneak peek today as well because the monthlies are just they're just they just recycle themselves so they're the same thing every single month but there are some other pages in here that don't recycle themselves so check that video out if you want to see how this looks and then i have my calculator okay so let's get into it So I'm going to open this up to November, but I'm going to pull this out because I want to be able to find where I'm at easily. Okay, and so let's turn to the first month that I'm working with. So since we're starting in November, not January, then I know that this is going to end in November and then that's when I'll have to start a new budget planner and I'm okay with that. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So I'm not going to put this here. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I will put it here. I was thinking maybe I should put it on the weekly or the monthly, but we'll put it here and see how that works. All right. So this first page here is the monthly overview. So this is an important page because this is going to, or I'm sorry, the monthly budget tracker. So this is going to give you some things that you can look at at a high level. And I know all of my numbers and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and write it all in and then we're going to break it down on the monthly. And then there's a paycheck budget tracker that I'm going to write it all in on there as well. So let's go ahead and write it in. And I'm also going to write in some goals here at the bottom, some things I'm saving for. And uh, so you'll see me write all of that in and I'll just talk you through some parts of it and some parts I'm going to speed up. But this is the first page that every single month starts with. So this is where I'm going to start to just kind of give myself a high level overview of the month. All right, so I went ahead and wrote in my income and what I have in savings. Now keep in mind, this is my family budget. I always say that this is just my little extra money that I keep and hold on to based on all of my social efforts and things like that. So it's not like our household expenses. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So all of this belongs to me, okay? So I pay all of this um, separately from our other household expenses. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So I went ahead and wrote in my income savings and then my fixed expenses. These are all fixed expenses. So I just went ahead and wrote them in there. And then now next I'm going to write in my sources of income and then I'm going to write in my goals. All right, so this is how that page looks for me. And I love this page because it's going to give me everything that I need. So from my income to what I have in my savings account, to all of my expenses, to any goals that I have, I can come here and look at that all on one page, okay? So next we come to the monthly pages. So this is where I'm gonna drill down and I'm gonna write in the date each bill is due. And I'm also gonna write some things here on the sidebar. Uh, just for reference, um, first I have to date our date. Our planners are undated, so I have to come in and date all of this. And then I'm going to write in all of the bills and when they're due on that particular date. I also like to write in the amount. I feel like that helps me just to know how much is coming out. A lot of this is auto pay as well. Um, some of them I do go in manually and pay, but most of them is auto pay. And then any additional I have, which you'll see on the next pages, then um, I'll pay towards the credit cards or whatever the, the expense is. So I'm going to 
update this first and then we'll I'll come back in and I'll write in all of the expenses. Now, I don't typically decorate this page. I feel like I almost need to give you all a decoration situation, but I don't really feel like it. I just want to keep it simple. So that's what we're going to do. If I feel compelled at any other month when I come back, because I think I'm going to start doing this regularly, um, then we'll decorate then. So for now, we'll just date everything and then write in the expense. Okay, so give me grace. Sometimes I don't feel like decorating. Sometimes I do. Today is one of those days that I don't. Okay, so let's go. Let's, let's just get this budget done, okay? So I did all of my monthly bills. I wrote in everything and when it's due. So I like to use the sidebar for some other bills that come out of a different account, um, which is PayPal. They do come out automatically. So I don't typically factor them in my expenses because what goes into PayPal is from the other income. It's not from the, any income that I have factored in, but I just like to know it. And I think eventually I may change that account to come or to be factored into this. So I just like to just track it, even though it really isn't factored or a part of these numbers here. But I'm gonna go ahead and write that in on the sidebar and any other thing that I need to remember to do. Like I have to pay for our, an upcoming cabin trip that we're doing, that's gonna be paid, um, not November, but December, but I wanna remember that I need to do it. And I could pay it at any moment, but I haven't factored that into these numbers here. But I, I'm just gonna write a reminder to myself, all right? So this is how my monthly looks. I just keep it simple, as you can see. All right, so I have my monthly done. And then again, we based everything pretty much off this monthly budget tracker. All right, so now I can come here during that week and I can take this and I can put it on my regular calendar so that I can see what bills need to be paid for that week. Again, a lot of this is recurring. I went ahead um, some time ago and set up, you know, auto pay on all of this, but I still like to know when it's coming out, all right? So now we're gonna break everything down even further. So I like to do everything by paycheck. Now with the income that I have coming in is not consistently paid on like every two weeks or every week or anything like that. I, I can withdraw it whenever I want for some things, not for everything. With my digital marketing, which is where I teach people how to do Amazon reviews, through Stand Store is where my products are and I can withdraw that pretty much daily. So what I try to do is wait until the 15th and the 30th of every month. I try to, it just depends on what I, what I need. And um, with, of course, with YouTube, that gets paid out on a certain day. And with my blog and different things get paid out on a certain day. But everything's all over the place. So I have to be really strategic with this part of the process. So that's why I wait for certain things to withdraw on a certain date and other things I know when it's coming. And so I can just plan for that accordingly. So what you're going to do is you're going to write in the month paycheck date. So this would be the 15th and because that's what I'm going to make my first withdrawal and all of these bills are going to be due within that time frame. A lot of times I have carryover. I know today's the 31st so I have to see where I end up today with what is left over in my account and then I transfer that over to the next month and I don't know what that is just yet until the end of the day because I'm not sure what's going to come in um, from my digital marketing business because again that just comes in daily and then I try to withdraw it on the 15th and at the end of the month okay so whatever is left over today I'm going to withdraw if I'm able to because sometimes you have to wait for a stand to clear things but I do at least write it in here so that I know how much my carryover is or what's like still in my account that I can carry over to the next um, paycheck 
Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. So again, I'm not sure what that is. So we're not gonna, we're gonna leave a spot for it, but we're not gonna write it in until I know today. And then I'll come back and write that. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and put in all of the sources of income. Now, most of my income uh, comes at the second part of the month or the second half of the month. Um, but I do have some stuff that I kind of factor in because Again, with certain businesses that I have, I don't know what's gonna come in. I can just go based off of previous months and how that month looked for me and take an average of that. So that's what I do. Um, a lot of times it's more than that, which is great because that means I have extra. Um, and sometimes, well, for the most part, it's more. Cause, and I try to just go on the lower end of that and hope for the best and hope that it's more. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down my month. So I'm gonna write in the source of income and what's budgeted. Now when I actually get that, you know, at the end of the first two weeks and I actually know how much came in, then I'm gonna write it in in the actual. So this won't be done until the 15th, okay? And then I'm gonna write in all of my bills that are due from the first to the 15th, all right? Then I'm gonna come over here. I am going to be incorporating cash envelopes in my budgeting system soon. Um, but now, for right now, I haven't quite decided when I'm gonna start that, but I am gonna go ahead and write in all of my categories. And then um, I don't, I think I have one sinking fund that's, I wanna get to Japan next year, so I'm planning on that. And other than that, I don't really do sinking funds, y'all. I don't, I probably should. So eventually we're gonna incorporate this whole entire planner and I'm gonna use it till the full, but right now we only use certain parts of it, okay? So I am gonna write in the cash envelopes and I'm gonna write in that one sinking fund and then I'm gonna write some things, I think I'm gonna write some things here and then I'm gonna tr track my savings. Okay, so let's start over on this side. And I love having a coil planner for that very reason that I just showed you. I can flip it and it makes it easier to write. Okay, so again, we're gonna write in just this top part, the income breakdown, and then I'll go ahead and write in all of my bills. And remember, we have this page here that I had everything on, so I can come here for reference. I have everything in date order, so I know I can write all of this in up until that, okay? Or I could come here on the monthly and I could look and see, okay, up until the 15th, what are all the bills? And I can come here and write them in, all right? And also what I think I'm gonna do in the future, maybe next month, I kind of feel like I have to get on track with it, is I'm gonna change my dates to have my, um, to withdraw the payments on at the end of the month and use that for the first to the 15th. Because again, if I'm cashing out on the 15th, then I don't want, I wanna make sure that some of those bills aren't late. Fortunately, I, they haven't been because I've had a lot to carry over and um, hoping it's the same today. I mean, I do, I know what's in there now and that should help me to be able to pay pretty much all of those bills up until the 15th. And that's why I say sometimes I go ahead and withdraw because again, with Stan Store, I can withdraw daily or you know, every couple of days. Um, I try to hold off if I can, but if I can't, I just know that I'm not withdrawing anything after the 15th because that's gonna go for the next. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna change it up. Um, we'll see, because I do like to just wait as long as possible and, and do a lump sum cash out, as opposed to these, you know, 200 there, 300 there, 500 there, you know what I mean? So we'll see if we need to reassess. are all of my bills and I believe most of my bills come out on at the beginning of the month I have way less than that on the second part of the month okay so when I had and calculated my budget again I didn't put any carryover even as budgeted Oops, sorry <laughs> so I just went ahead and wrote in that amount from the average of what should come in 
from the first to the 15th again a lot of times it's more but I like to just take the average and again we'll come back and put the actual and that'll just be extra money because usually I can make my budget within what I average that I'm gonna get okay now I need to go ahead and calculate all of this so that I know how much I need to um, be aware of that's coming out for the bills okay so I got my trusty calculator here so I'm just going to start adding everything up All right, so this is how much my expenses are for the first half of the month. So I'm going to write that in, 745.25. That's my bill total, 45.25. Okay, now I'm going to take the amount that I have budgeted in terms of what should come in for my income and subtract that so that I know what the leftover is, okay? So I should have 12, 54, 75 left over. Okay, again, we'll have to come back and do actuals when I know for sure. All right, so next part of the process is again, cash envelopes. So what you do is you'd take this leftover amount and you would come here and write in the leftover, which again is 12, 54, 75 so that's what i have to work with to fill my cash envelopes okay so i'm going to go ahead and write in my categories again i'm not quite sure yet if i'm going to do this starting i am going to do it in november i just don't know again i'm not sure if i'm going to do it in november but i'm going to go ahead and at least write the categories in um i used to do cashless cash envelopes but i want to do the cash envelopes soon i do um this is also where i kind of keep note of like my spending my expenses that are not like my bills so even if I don't do the cash envelopes, I still consider the dollar amounts I put here. So I typically do like groceries, my personal expenses, eating out, things like that. I'll go ahead and budget it here, even if I'm not stuffing a cash envelope, okay? If that makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead and write in those categories. And any cash envelopes that you grab from our shop, which we have a bunch of them, are going to have these same categories, all right? Okay, so I'm just gonna focus on grocery. And I did a pretty big grocery trip already for October. So for this first week, I'm gonna say 150. I don't think I need that much because I have a lot of stuff, okay? I usually do 300, but we're gonna cut that in half. Personal, I'm going to say within the first two weeks, I'm getting my nails done today. So I can go another two weeks, but probably within this time frame, I will need to get my nails done again. Um, I don't spend too much money, y'all, um, since I curbed my Amazon addiction. <laughs> so I'm gonna say $100. And then we'll say for eating out, um, I've been cooking a lot at home, so we're gonna, I'm gonna give us $100. And I think we should be good, okay? So out of that $12.45, which again, that we had left over from taking our expenses and minusing our bills, we had $12.45 left over to fill our cash envelopes if that was is what I was doing. Okay, so $12.54.75 minus, well, let me do this first. Let me add that stuff up, okay? So I could put that here at the bottom. So 150 plus, oh, I could have done this in my head, y'all. 350, okay, so the envelope total is 350. All right, so let's see what we have left over from the 1245 minus 350. All right, so after all of that, I should have eight, 95.75, okay? Now, again, I told you about the sinking fund, which is Addison really wants to go to Japan. So on probably maybe the fifth of the month, I'm gonna add $100 to our Japan. Um, so I do need to write this 895 here, because remember, that's what we have left over after we did our cash envelopes. 
or took in account our, our variable expenses. I think that's what that's called, right? Um, y'all, and give me grace on the lingo. <laughs> I'm not a big budgeter. I mean, I do this on a basic level, um, but I don't know all the jargon and the terminology, and I'm not all in like that, okay? So give me grace if I'm saying something wrong or if any of this is wrong. It's not wrong, no, but, <laughs> and it's what works for me at the end of the day. Okay, so again, eight ninety five seventy five is what we had from the, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> left over from here so we carry that up there okay and now we write in what the category is japan and i'm going to try to throw a hundred dollars in there okay 100 all right so we put that at the bottom here 100 and so we know we have 795 75 left over okay so now i can throw that into debt or savings all right so i am I'm really having a lot of debt that i want to track here um i probably should have put no i don't have any i mean credit card is debt but i consider that bills i don't know if i should put that here or here so y'all budgeters let me know if i'm putting that in the wrong section i just feel like it goes here for me Okay, and I think like, I don't know, I'm, I'm not always sure how to use this section. I guess if you just have a large amount of debt that you're paying towards, and I don't have that, so um, I'm gonna leave that blank. All right, so then here I would put uh, 795, because that's what the carryover is, and that's how much is left over, because we didn't do anything. Oh, well, I guess I shouldn't have put that there. I just should have put the leftover and that should have been zero. Okay, so now we can throw the rest of that into savings, you guys. So I'm I'm doing the $500 savings challenge, the 52 weeks and the 100 envelope challenge, the $500 challenge, y'all. I'm trying to. So we'll just try to throw it all in there. Maybe I'll do a video sometime soon showing you guys how to, how I would do that because that's kind of new for me as well. Usually I would just put it in my savings. Um, but I, I heard that doing these little envelope challenges really um, does help. And I want to try to try something new to be able to save a, a ton of money. Okay, so those are the four challenges I'm doing. Again, we write the $7.95 here. $7.95. I hate when I mess up. And I can throw that in these various envelopes. So I'm just going to put savings total $7.95.75. Um, um, yeah, because that's that's how much I'm doing. So leftover is zero. I don't know why I feel stressed out. <laughs> Budgeting is so tricky for me. Um, but I want to go all in with it because I usually, I mean, I have a system that works for me, but which consists of just a lot of random notes but I really want to throw myself into this system. All right, so there's the first two weeks and let me write it in. So we know that it's November. And then the date, I'm gonna just put 11, 15. All right, so that's how that looks for me. So as you can see, I have more than enough that I need to be able to pay what I need to pay and still have leftover. So this is the goal for savings for this month. All right, so um, at the bottom here, all right, and then there's a little spot down here for income minus expenses. I'm not gonna fill in that right now, okay? Let's move on to the second two weeks of the month. So this would be the 30th, because remember I cash out on the 30th and the 15th. All right, still November. And this is where the bulk of my income comes in. All right, so let's go ahead and write in my income breakdown, and then we'll do the same thing that we just did in the previous. Now, when it comes to carryover, I do like to write it here, especially if I need it. But in this particular case, I think I should be okay with throwing all of this into savings. But sometimes I would maybe half that and then I would carry over a little bit to, to kind of get me 
to start off the second two weeks. So we'll see if I decide to do that. Again, we have a whole budget, or I'm sorry, a whole actual section. So if anything about this changes, I can come in the actual and I put what actually happened. So if I decide that I don't wanna put that much in savings, then I'll come here and I'll put that to carry over. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that blank for now. All right, so here is all of my income. So I'm gonna grab my calculator and calculate all of this. So I could write it here at the bottom. All right, so that's 27.39.90, all right. Okay, so we know how much we have to pay all of the bills. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the bills in now. All right, grab my calculator again and calculate all of this up so I know what to write down here for my total. All right, 13.26.43. All right, is the total of this. So let's take away, let's add the income, 27.39.90 minus 13.26.43. So I'll have 14, 13.47 left over, all right? So let's go ahead and write in those same categories for the cash envelopes. That by this time, I probably will be stuffing it, so we'll we'll see. So 11-16 would be the date that I would stuff. And we have 14, 13, 47 to work with. All right. And let's write in our categories. Right, and I'm pretty much gonna do the same. So for groceries, again, 150 should be good for us. Um, personal, I'm gonna do 100 because I'll probably get my nails done again. And it's usually not that much, but I like to give myself a little extra. And then I'm going to do fun because I'm doing something with Addison. But actually I'm paying for that this month. So I'm not gonna factor that in November, but we are doing it in November. And then I wanna get my hair colored and I think it's gonna be about $85. So let's give ourselves a hundred for tip. All right, so let's calculate this up. Why do I keep doing this on the calculator when I know? It's the same thing as the last month, the last week, but I had another section, oh, eating out. And I, I still wanna give us a hundred. And again, if we have less, then we that can all be poured into savings or left or um, carry over to the next month, okay? All right, so that would be 450. Now, so let's take that, what I had left over, 1347 minus 450. So I should have 963.47 left over. There's not gonna be sinking funds because I already threw some into that one and the last one. And we are going to do the same savings challenges. So this would be envelope left over would be 963.47. All right, so zero. 
963.47, okay? And then nothing here, so 963.47 should still be left over, zero, 963.47. All right, so now I can throw all of that into savings, which is more than what it was in the previous two weeks. So I should be able to save a good little bit, you guys. All right, so again, we're doing the $500, $1,500, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure if I'm going to stuff all of that in these binders or if I'm going to put leave most of it in my account. We'll have to see how I feel because I don't like having that much cash around, just sitting around the house. I feel like it's more protected. But again, I want to try this envelope stuff because I heard, I heard it's life changing. Okay, so we're going to do... Um, I'm not going to put what's budgeted here because again, we'll just throw in whatever the um, slots is. I'll just choose some slots and... Um, and we'll see how it goes, you guys. But I should be able to save, again, I have 963, 47. I should be able to put that all in savings. So I'm just gonna put the whole amount. And again, we'll see if we need any carryover and we'll write it in actual, let me know. All right, so this is how that will look for me. We have two more weeks left, so if you get paid weekly, you could totally do that. And then again, uh, you're gonna be putting your expenses in as well. So this is how everything ends. So you can come here and put the date, description, category, amount, paid. Uh, you have three pages of that, and then you start over again. So I'll come here as I'm spending money, and I'll write in the expenses here so I can track that as well, just to see where my money is going. Um, but just know that you get two additional weeks with this as well. So if you get paid weekly, we got you covered all right so this is the second half of the month again i withdraw i'm gonna try to withdraw on the 30th but I'm, it's going to be money withdrawn anywhere from the 16th through the 30th if i decide to do cash outs randomly we'll see because sometimes i have to do that because i just need to pay something or i just need the money or whatever and so we'll decide that as time goes along but we will stop at the 30th and that will be factored in on the first paycheck which um i have everything planned out for so my whole november is covered so again, it starts here on this page. There are some other pages here as well, like savings trackers, um, all types of stuff here. So let me just show you real quick. So with just the budget workbook like this, and then you have your budget categories, your financial goals here. This is more of yearly type overview type stuff. I love coming here to track the income as well. So I'll come here for November once I know what my actual true income is and I'll write that in. I like to see the running total. Um, and then you have your subscription tracker, which I use as well for like Amazon, um, you know, things like that. I, I am going to write that in here. Um, I mean, I probably won't do that today, but I'll come back maybe in the next video and show you guys how that looks for me. So that's like my Sam's Club membership and all of that stuff. And then I can come here and look at that to factor that into my budget. Okay. I know I don't have any of that going on for November, so I sh I'm good for that. Okay. Then your income tracker. So this is like, you know, um, uh, kind of similar to this page, but more drilled down. So if you have multiple sources of income, then you have your debt reduction tracker, your debt snowball tracker, budget challenges, which I love, then your saving stuff. So I would come here and I would put all of that here as well. So we're going to do a more detailed video later showing you how I'm filling in some of these pages. And then again, you get to your monthly budget tracker. So I have all of everything broken down, know exactly what needs to be paid. And then I went a little bit further on the monthly. I broke down what comes out of PayPal, which isn't factored into this budget. My monthly, you know, in terms of when all the bills come out, some stuff is auto, some stuff is not. Then we have our paycheck bill tracker so this is everything broken down for the first two weeks of the month then i have the second two weeks of the month all right so we are good to go you see how awesome this budget planner is i really love it so this is available in our shop i have the page marker included so i can easily get to the month that i'm in uh, we also have a ton of other things to help you with budgeting i just used the calculator today which i love it comes in a, like a deep blue and this white color really cute chic very simple easy to use so i am good to go so now i'll just keep this carry this around with me with my regular planner so I can make sure that I'm filling in the expenses remember you still at the end of the month have that expense tracker so you want to make sure that you're filling in things as you're spending them and um, and that way I could just kind of make sure that I stay on track so remember don't forget about these pages as well all right 
So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I haven't done a budget with me in a long time. This was super fun. Helps me, and I hope that it helps you guys as well. So again, we have a full budget collection, which I'll link below just in case you guys are interested in any of these items. We have a bunch of different styles for the, the budget planner, which I'll be adding to. So that way, if you don't see anything you like, hopefully at some point you will. All right, so if I did anything wrong, give me grace again. Give me tips as well. Um, if you saw something that I can improve on, be kind, but I'm always open to making things better. But I do, again, at the end of the day, think that this is just what works for me. All right. So I will entertain, but also, you know, may take bits and pieces and may leave others. Okay. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I appreciate you stopping by today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video so much so that you'll give me a thumbs up. I hope that if you're new here, you'll consider subscribing. And as always, I hope you'll come back and catch another video, in which case I'll see you then.